So my name's Dana Utah. Um, and I'll just get the meaning out uh, before I start the rest of my talk. So Dana Utah means she who is bonded with generosity. Um, so it's she who is bonded with generosity. Um, and I guess the sort of tabloid headlines of my retreat is Dana Utah has the happiest time um, of her life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's had a really, really happy time. And there's a lot of um, different, different reasons for that. And I think, as um, Sagrasila mentioned, one of the reasons for that was just community. So there were 16 of us getting ordained on the retreat and five women on the team. And um, it, was just, it just felt to me like it was just a community of very, very mature, very um, yeah, good women. So we're sort of like from all over the world. So there's a woman from Montana, a woman from Auckland, someone from Ireland, three women from Germany. Um, at some point on the retreat, we even learned the German, the German precepts off. Um, and some of us even learned it off by heart. It's a very, very international retreat. And sort of a real mix of ages. So um, the oldest woman on the retreat was 68. Um, she was very, very fit. She was like jogging. <laughs> and the, this kind of Spanish mountainous terrain. And then there was Akasha Jones, who's about 10 years younger than me, she's 24. Um, and just the, all of us together just felt like such a good, such a good group of women. Um, and I think one of, the, one of the things that really, really um, characterized our, our year, our set, our group, was that we're in such harmony with each other. I felt like that was a real value in our retreat. Um, yeah, and I think it was something about going beyond exchange, going beyond the I'll do this if you do this. Um, and the real sort of um, point that I think it changed for me, or it tweaked for me, was um, around the work rotors. So um, every, every two or three weeks, we had these um, work rotors where we'd sign up to do a job, like carry water, or um, you know, make the shrines, and light the stove, or um, make, make um, hot water, which is not as easy as you think. <laughs> <laughs> hot water is like a real job. <laughs> um, and in the first work rotor, the first work rotor, like all, well, kind of most of us, well, most of us rushed to the board, and some of us were a bit cool and just like, you know, we're not, we're not gonna rush. But um, and then the second work rota, I, I asked my friend um, to choose a job for me. And then by the third rota, we were all doing it collectively. So all of us were sort of standing around a sheet of paper with all the jobs, going, "Well, um, what can you do? What would would be best for you? Well, I don't mind doing that. Well, why don't you do that then?" And that was something about, um, yeah, all of us working together to to give, really give what we can give to the retreat and give to each other in quite a very self-natural, unselfconsciously selfless way. Um, and so that was just one part of the, of the community aspect. I think the other part was um, just a communal practice. So we were meditating together, studying together, doing ritual together, um, being in silence together. <coughs> And I think the, t the two things, so living together really harmoniously and um, really deepening our practice collectively satisfied something in me. I was trying to explain it to my chapter last night, and I think it's a little bit like, it, it satisfied the animal part of me. So the pack animal that just wants to do things with other people, really go towards something in a group, um, a very, very simple, very practical, um, almost energetically and then there's this big vision of um, waking up of insight um, and you know a bit closer to home ordination and just the two things which just felt very very satisfying just something very primal and very deep and then something that's completely transcendental um, and then another part of my happiness I think was just just um, discovering magic so one of my friends, uh, one of my friends on the retreat was a woman called Akasa Jyoti. So some of you might know her as Hattie, or ex Hattie from Adishtana. Um, and we spent quite a lot of time talking to each other, just about life, but also quite a lot about meditation. And um, yeah, talking to Akasa Jyoti about meditation just felt like stepping into someone else's mind and stepping into someone else's world. Um, she's quite different from me. 
So it's a little bit, I think you're trying to think of an example of this, and I think and a good example is that, um, so Kasha Jyoti and I went foraging for herbs um, for the dinner. So I was telling her, okay, well, this is oregano, and this is thyme, and um, both of these herbs go very well in tomato sauce. You know, it tastes very good. Um, and quite sort of um, sensual and practical and concrete. That's my world, that's my world. And um, Akasha Jyoti's world is a bit like, oh wow, we live in this magical land of Akashavana where it just provides us herbs to make amazing dinners. <laughs> and it's just, and, but you know, we talked about that quite a lot and it really sort of um, infused my meditation practice. So often when I do the um, refuge tree visualization where we visualize a host of um, enlightened figures, I have in my mind, okay, Shakyamuni over there, um, Bhante Sangharashta, the founder of our movement, over here, <laughs> historical disciples over there. And sometimes I try to imagine um, just doing it in a different way, a bit more magical way, a bit more Akasha Jyoti way, I guess. <laughs> and, but, you know, I'll just be in a land of, um, it's a golden land where I'm in the presence of enlightened beings, and they're all happy to see me, and they're all happy to see beings practicing. And just really changed my meditation practice. Um, yeah, and a couple of things about magic. I don't have very much time to spend on this, but um, so on the day of my public ordination, I was camping outside. The day of my public ordination, I could hear the. Um, I woke up to the sound of raindrops. You know, after a fantastic two weeks of no rain, I woke up to like raindrops on my public ordination. I get, oh, I can't believe it's raining. And then my next thought was, well, how else am I going to get? rainbows. How else are we going to have rainbows? <laughs> and true enough, so by the time I got my first coffee, there was a rainbow. Uh, yeah, and then rainbows are just very auspicious, aren't they? <laughs> um, and then maybe the most magical moment on the retreat was as I was going up to get my case up from Subhadra Mati, there was this like, really loud clap of thunder. Uh, I was just, you know, I got up and I was like, bang, and then I got my case there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it might happen to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and then my, I mean, I was quite surprised by my meditation practice as well, because um, so sometimes when I go on retreat, I think I can get quite easily get blissed out and quite easily get into quite, um, yeah, of blissful states of mind on retreat. Um, I didn't ha really have that on, on this particular retreat. I think what happened to me more was um, when, when I had those moments of feeling, oh yeah, they, um, yeah, they had those moments of feeling like, oh, I totally forgive everybody. And this is how everybody is, and everyone is just completely accepted. Not necessarily by me, but it's just like everything is just the way things are. And um, yeah, it's quite hard to talk about it, isn't it? But um, it had a sense of groundedness, of steadiness, um, a really like fluid and abiding love. It wasn't the kind of kind of like, oh my god, love everybody. <laughs> it's more, it's just really, really steady and really grounded. Um, and that just um, sort of continued outside my meditation practice. And certainly after, particularly after my ordination, I felt like I was, every day I was just getting happier. Every day I was just getting happier. I, I guess like, I just didn't think I could be so happy. Yeah, but I was. Um, in fact, I was just tell you one more anecdote. On my way back, um, so I took the train back from Akashavana, and on my way back um, on the Barcelona to Paris leg, I sat next to a guy who happens to be father to uh, an order member. So his son was ordained about, you know, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago at Kukiloka. And he was asking me about my retreat and just off, you know, asking me like what sort of time I had. And I told him it was the happiest time of my life, or really the happiest time of my life. And he was really surprised. He he, he asked me, "Do you it was be, Do you mean it was better than getting married?" <laughs> yeah, it was totally better than getting married. <laughs> yeah, it really was the happiest time of my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
so one more little anecdote and then I'll wrap up. Um, so one thing that happened for me on the retreat was every, uh, for quite a long time, I had really bad hay fever, you know, really, really, really bad hay fever. So my nose was dripping constantly. My throat was quite, um, I found that my throat was quite sore and my eyes were quite sore. Um, and this happened over the ordination period, uh, continued after the ordination period. And then one day, um, Subhadramati gave me this before, before meditation in the morning. I thought I'd just read you the card because it's just an example of community life, I guess, um, and simplicity and love. So she said in her card to me, um, Dearest Dana Utah, in the meditation yesterday, after I after, I wish that I could bear your hay fever for you for the rest of the retreat. Since I don't think even the Buddhas can grant me this, or perhaps my faith is not sufficient, please accept the silken handkerchief, gentle on the nose and very quick to wash and dry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, on, on that retreat, this was just the most amazing, most appropriate, the like, best thing that anyone could give me. <laughs> And also I knew, um, just in those conditions, I also knew that if someone had given me a second-hand handkerchief in London, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, it just sort of, um, I don't know, just the, the, the whole note and just think, thinking that, yeah, she really would have borne my hay fever for me for the rest of the retreat. Um, yeah, it was very, very moving. So the last thing I wanted to do was just thank people. Um, yeah, Whew, that's a bit emotional. I just want to thank people. Um, so I just want to thank Murta Sri and Subhadramati. Murta Sri is here, Subhadramati is on a two month um, solitary now. But many, many of you know her and they were both my preceptors. Also, they were in my kula um, in Karnamati in Shvada City, and Dai Chitta and um, Damadina Nagarashta and Lamani were the women who kind of helped me, helped me get ordained, helped me decide when it's time. So I really want to join, um, want to thank the team at the LBC um, for helping me go, and in particular, in particular, my good friend Holly, um, who basically ran the yoga project um, while while I was away, you know, with Shadow City's help, and also like quite a lot of people helped out. Um, taking on the classes so that the program could just run as normal. So just say their names, um, Tina, Thea, Jody, Becky, Irene, Kaylin, and I believe even Jaya Raja um, <laughs> led a class or two. And Pushpa. Oh, and Maitri Pushpa, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, and um, another thing, another group of people who I thought were quite significant in helping me go was um, the women in my meditation club. So um, at some point, Annie, Fiona, Marjorie Vajri and I set up this meditation club and we just got together and talked about meditation. It felt like it really helped me go on a long meditation retreat and be able to understand my experience. And then, of course, Manjusia, um, who's my husband, sitting in the corner over there, was very, very patient and very, very supportive, um, particularly in that, those final months running up to me getting my invitation, which probably was quite unbearable for me, but also for him. <laughs> <laughs> and his sort of like deep pockets and a generous, generous heart, just supporting me be at the LBC um, and be in community training for ordination. And then the, maybe the last thing I'll say is um, just the LBC mandala. So I've come home to um, I come home to this. Um, everyone just sort of beaming love at me, but also to like the steady stream of cards um, and text messages and emails and messages. Um, yeah, over over Facebook, it's just congratulating me. Um, and making me feel very, very welcome, very like noted that I was gone and noted that it was a significant step. <coughs> yeah, I think, I think that's been like one of the, the biggest gifts, um, the ordination, but particularly coming back from it um, into, into this. Yeah. Yeah, so my name's Dana Utah. <laughs> <laughs>